So you need a NAS that does things homes need without a bunch of crazy complexity. Well, WD may just have the best option for you. First off, huge shout out to both Newegg and Western Digital for sponsoring this video. Today I wanted to give you an overview of a cool device that does a great job of walking the line between professional and consumer friendly when it comes to the wild, wild world of NAS. For those of you who don't know what NAS is, NAS is Network Attached Storage. And unlike a lot of the portable hard drives, etc., that you plug into, like say for instance your PC, these directly attach to your network and have to be a part of your network. Now today we're gonna to be talking about a classic, and that's the Western Digital MyCloud Pro Series PR2100. Now you might be like, Roby, why is this a classic? Because it's not a new product, it's actually been on the market for a while. This one is the diskless version, but Western Digital and Newegg both sent me also eight terabyte red NAS drives. I could have up to 16 terabytes of storage available if I just wanna throw caution to the wind with my data, but if you're smart, and you should be, that means you're actually gonna have closer to eight terabytes of storage, or I'm gonna have closer to eight terabytes of storage, when configuring this with RAID 1, more on that later, and ensuring that if something were to happen with the drives, I'm not left holding the bag and not holding my data. It has an Intel Pentium N3710 processor. This CPU should be able to completely handle up to three and at a stretch four devices watching Blu-ray quality videos. It does have four gigabytes of RAM that cannot be upgraded as an FYI, but don't worry, it's still plenty snappy and that's worth noting. Most of their access is all done via a MyCloud.com or MyCloud Mobile. And unlike some of the more high-end NASs like from QNAP, etc., this doesn't have an HDMI port or direct control from the device. Now, before you get all caught up on that, this is more specifically around simplicity. And both the device and the interface are extremely easy to use. And you can see that is definitely a focus here from Western Digital. It does have features like a Cronus Pure Image, which does things like AI-based data fence. And it has things like easy to use backups, like a vault. It's like a, imagine this is like a vault. <laughs> this thing has really good implementation with Plex and running a Plex server. So if you are into like backing up Blu-rays, home movies, or you're like a content creator who's looking to make an initial jump to a NAS and wants to have remote editors, this could be a great feature and great product for you. Last thing worth mentioning, and this is also pretty cool, is that this also has like what's called a one-touch copy, which allows you to plug in like a camera, an external hard drive, etc., and literally just press this one button here and have it copy it onto the NAS. Okay, so that's all like a nice overview, but let's pop the box open, show you like basically what's inside of it, how to set it up, and actually what the software where it looks like. Okay, so inside you get hello, meet your private cloud, and it's got pretty simple instructions on how to basically get things set up. And you also get, looks like you get a code for your Plex Pass, we're not gonna show you that. Uh, inside the box here, before we open everything else up, you get an ethernet cable, instructions, you get a power cable, and then inside here I'm assuming you also have a power brick. Hey, surprise. Wow, it's like sealed, sealed. Okay, so here we go. On the back, you've got USB 3, you've got two ethernet ports, and then you've got power. A small exhaust fan. Remember when I was talking about that one button copy? This is that button you push right there, you just plug it into here, hit that button, and it'll upload, and then of course you've got power. So, pretty straightforward in terms of uh, the device in general, but well, let's really quick get stuff inside of it. So, all you're gonna do is we have our eight terabyte drives here. I'm just gonna open these up, take it, slide it in, and then same thing with this one. What I suggest doing is lifting up on the little thing to push it in, just like that. Same thing with this one, lift it up, give it a little push in and then click it in and then boom, that's it. That's all there is to it and it's all set up. So now let's get this turned on, which is pretty straightforward. Just basically plug it in and then I'll show you how to get it set up. We've got the device plugged in now. We've gone to mycloud.setup. We're using the MyCloud PR2100. So here we are inside of Welcome to MyCloud OS. Then you have your license agreement, blah, 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 blah. For now, we're just gonna set up some, something super simple. Now, auto update firmware. This is an interesting thing. We did some research on this. 
Um, auto updating firmware, it's usually recommended to you to update the firmware and you check on it on your own. Uh, one thing about auto updating is when it selects to do it. This way you won't have your NAS go down, but again, completely up to you what you choose to do. We are gonna go ahead and hit no. And here we go, we're gonna set up your RAID. And so remember how early on I talked about this is that you can actually, you can actually if you wanted to have up to 16 terabytes of storage, but more than likely we're gonna have eight terabytes because of how it's going in there. So we have what's called uh, JBOD, which is not a RAID, but basically what this does is this allows you to basically store things on either volume. The big thing about this is that should you lose either one of the drives that you basically lose the data on that drive. Now spanning is kind of one of the same things where if you lose one drive or the other drive, then you lose all the data on the drive. It's not essentially backed up. See, RAID 0 is basically data is striped across multiple devices, enabling accelerated reading. You then get eight terabytes, but if either drive goes down, then you lose all data, and you're basically uh, pretty much, uh, you're pretty much uh, up a creek without a paddle. And then there's RAID 1, which is the one that I recommend for everybody, which is where you have two copies of the data. It's basically mirrored across the two of them. So should you lose one drive, then you can just pop in another drive and then the whole volume would basically be rebuilt. So um, we're gonna go ahead and use RAID 1. So we're gonna go ahead and switch to RAID 1 there, and we're gonna hit next. Look at that, they sent me two good drives. We're good to go, hit next. This is where you might do something like set up half of it for RAID 1, and then you can configure the remaining uh, space as spanning. But we're gonna go ahead and use all eight gigs and use it for RAID 1. Hit next, you put in a brand new eight terabyte red disc. Uh, you would auto rebuild the RAID. I'm gonna turn that on, which is super awesome. And then you can do stuff like allows you to choose which volumes you want to encrypt. Uh, I don't care about encrypting stuff because again, it's just videos. This is just a summary of what we've configured and uh, what we called it. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit next from there. And then boom, hit finish. And now it's going to go and partition our drives and go from there. We've got our little device ready to go. It had to format everything. By the way, it, for eight terabytes or an eight terabyte drive, took about 10 minutes to be completely finished. And so you can see we have 7.85 terabytes free. You can see the diagnostics are healthy and then our firmware is completely up to date. We talked about the cloud access thing. We're not gonna do that here, just given that we have some pretty light security. Network activity and CPU and RAM activity. You can see that if you're actually starting to stretch the limits of uh, a device like this. Let's talk about users real quick and jumping into this. So you have two options. You have an admin, uh, which you should never do. So I'll be super clear about that. We're gonna go ahead and create a user here real quick. We're gonna just call it RobyTech. And his password is just for the sake of it, something stupid. And then over here you have groups. And what this allows you to do is easily manage permissions uh, between the two. So for instance, you could do stuff like editors. From here you can do group memberships, go to configure join editors. You wanna control like who has access to different amounts of data, you can do that as well through here. And you might be like, oh no, we only want him to be able to read or we only want him to be able to read and write or he has no access to this, etc. So very, very cool in terms of uh, giving people access, uh, etc. One thing I'm hoping that you're seeing is as we're moving through this, the GUI or graphic user interface for this is actually very, very easy and very straightforward. There's a bunch of different apps that you can install. The Plex server, media server, which is one of the things that actually comes with this, is probably one of the best things about this. You then now have MyCloud. This allows you to use the MyCloud app, uh, either from the web or from your mobile phone. If you wanna change your RAID array, you just wanna check the status of your disks, etc. It just gives you a lot of good information on that. Very, very straightforward. And then lastly, over here in settings, uh, is things where you can do things like change your device name, uh, change your time uh, format. If you're starting to notice some weirdness with this, um, you can run quick tests, full tests, you can run full system diagnostics. This is a great, very easy device for you to go set up, uh, have your kids and everybody be able to have access to it. So if they're at school, they've got MyCloud on their PC, they can, you know, their homework all gets stored here. So a nice data storage thing for you. Anyway, guys, that was the MyCloud Pro Series PR2100. Uh, NAS device uh, and a great overview of the device and what it is capable of doing, showing you how to set it up, uh, what it might be used for, and then of course some of the additional capabilities you can always get with a device like this. I'd love to know your thoughts and maybe you could win a little cash in the process. First and foremost, you need to leave a quality comment down below along with liking and subscribing to the channel. Now when I say quality comment, it doesn't need to be positive, it just needs something you liked or didn't like about the video, just not something like I deserve to win and can you send me a free MyCloud Pro Series NAS device or something else weird or lame. You also need to ensure we have a way to reach you via your YouTube profile, like your email. So put your email 
in your YouTube profile because we will be giving away $25 to one lucky comment down below that is worldwide as long as you can accept PayPal or Venmo. Now, it doesn't, if you don't have your email in your YouTube profile, we can't tell you you've won and therefore you just can't win. So what did you guys think about the MyCloud Pro Series PR2100? Uh, what do you guys think about NASA's in general? Have NASA's been too complicated? And did you guys see something with how we set this up? And one of the things that's super awesome about WD uh, is just how easy it is to set this up. Did this kind of uh, assuade your fears and maybe make you think about getting a device like this? Or is this still something that you feel like is too much for you? I'd love to know that and more down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robitech. Now, did you know we have a live stream channel for special builds and events? In fact, we've built NASA's on our live stream channel and we've covered other things like this as well. So make sure you check out Robotech Live down in the description below so you can like and subscribe to that channel to know when we live, when we go live and you don't miss awesome builds like NASA's or other builds like what we've built just recently. Do you have questions about NAS or any other tech related questions? Then check out our amazing Discord server over at discord.gg slash Robitech filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas on these very subjects. Are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robitech.com or at Robitech Deals on Twitter where we have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on tech uh, from PC components to TVs to games to you name it. And finally, finally, you can follow me and my entire team on all the other socials at Robitech absolutely everywhere. We hope you enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks guys.